Welcome to In The News. I'm your host, Ron Jacobson. And today in the news, Paris. Four killed, four injured. But the big question is, has France become too dangerous for Jews to live in? With me on the line already is Shimon Samuels from the Simon Wiesenthal Center in Paris. Good evening, Simon. Shimon, how are you? Good, thank you. Good evening. So, has it become officially too dangerous for Jews to be in, in Paris and France? You know, interesting question, interesting situation. Uh, we're used to calling Israel to our friends and family whenever there's a terrorist uh, incident of this nature. Uh, we're now receiving calls and emails from Israel. Uh, are you okay? Are you in the area? And, I mean, there's a you know, fascinating switch here. Mm -hmm. uh, there's the, the circumstantial situation. Uh, Paris has been locked down today. Wherever you go, there's been very heavy police. I came back from Brussels in the station. I mean, it was like in a movie. You get up on the platform and there were armed guards all the way along it. Uh, went to a supermarket, and there is a big poster saying, you know, uh, Vigi Pirat, which is the anti-terrorist authority, uh, alerts uh, terrorism. Uh, so there is obviously a situation where people are concerned, uh, but, I mean, there's a sort of a disconnect between people concerned for what is happening in France through, let's say, a publication like Charlie Hebdo, and people who might be concerned for the Jewish community. Mm -hmm. That uh, disconnect certainly applies when it comes to understanding the situation in Israel. Uh, I would not say that it creates an understanding that we're all in the same boat. So uh, the way things are today, there's the circumstantial, uh, and there's also the contextual. And in the contextual, I would suggest that um, there is, you know, uh, obviously an understanding that here we have an attack on a publication and an attack on a Jewish supermarket. What is the connection? The connection is that the Jews are enemies of the jihadist uh, Islamists because they represent the same values which Europe has espoused, and that is the code of ethics and human rights that the Jews gave to the world. But so um, you know, we have a situation which is uh, contextually very complicated for Jews. Now, in, in the news media that has covered this, it wasn't 100% sure that the attack on the kosher uh, grocery store, the supermarket, was intentionally on a Jewish target. Was it an anti-Semitic attack, or was it circumstantial that they went into that specific uh, supermarket? President Hollande of France has just made a uh, nationwide speech uh, on television, in which he has clearly said that this was an anti-Semitic event. Uh, the fact that uh, the, uh, the hostage taker uh, in the supermarket has been uh, himself related to the two uh, murderers of Charlie Hebdo, uh, the fact that yesterday he himself killed a policeman, a policewoman, but he has claims to have come back from uh, an ISIS or Al-Qaeda training. Uh, in this case, they talk about being trained in the Yemen. Mm -hmm. uh, this obviously shows that you know, the first target, ideologically, is the Jew. But the Jew, within the context of the broader Western enemy, which is the enemy of this type of Islamism. Mm -hmm. I should also note that in the same speech, President Hollande made very clear that this was not a, a, a Muslim thing. And, um, I mean, when somebody comes to kill screaming Allahu Akbar, uh, is it not Muslim? And this is, I mean, I, in, a, in another little piece that I wrote, I said that this is a seething volcano covered by a flimsy blanket of denial. And the problem is that in France, you could be sued if you mention the fact that this is a Muslim issue. Um, so, you know, this is convoluted. Now, the question is, you know, uh, we have uh, seen uh, uh, a lot coming out of France. We know there are also um, anti-Semitism in other European countries. But does it seem that the, the police, the authorities in France, 
don't have the grip on the situation. I mean, your organization, the Simon Wiesenthal Center, you know, follows everything that is happening in the whole Jewish world with uh, the essence of, of anti-Semitism, right? Well, I mean, look, first we have to understand that, I mean, there was anti-Semitism in Europe long before uh, it became a Muslim issue. Um, anti-Semitism is endemic and inherent to European history. It's within its DNA. So, um, now, is there, uh, are you talking about coordination between intelligence services across Europe? Uh, yes, I mean, that's what they claim to. Uh, is there transatlantic? Well, I mean, these two killers were known uh, to the uh, intelligence uh, authorities, uh, CIA or, or DIA or whatever, uh, and, uh, but it was obviously not shared or, uh, with the French. Um, and here is a problem. Here is a, it's a very big problem where things tend to work by serendipity. Mm -hmm. uh, how were these two caught? Because one of them lost his ID card in the getaway car. How was the, uh, um, uh, the, the, the murderer in the Brussels Jewish Museum caught? Because he was on a bus, and it was quite by chance that he was stopped between Amsterdam and Marseille. Uh, he was French, but uh, he happened to have weaponry in his bag. Mm -hmm. Now, I mean, this, all of these things that happened by serendipity are very good, can, you know, circumstantially. But contextually, it means that there has to be more coordination. The fact that on Sunday there's going to be this unity march, uh, which will bring out probably 100,000 people, uh, is very important. Does that comfort the Jews? I don't think so. Because it's not a Jewish issue. And where were all of these people when synagogues were being attacked in the month of August? They were marching in solidarity with Palestine and Gaza. So the churches, the trade unions, the, the, the teachers, they will march on Sunday in a unity march, which is very important and might even mean because uh, David Cameron is coming, the Prime Minister of Italy, the Prime Minister of Spain is coming, and it may mean that there is better coordination from this time in. Mm -hmm. But it does not mean that it is just, uh, you know, comfort for the Jews. So uh, I'm, I'm going to ask you here something. Our partner uh, organization in France, which is called the National Bureau for Vigilance Against Anti-Semitism, and emerged out of something that uh, he, uh, the head of that organization, Sami Goslan, a former police uh, officer, mm -hmm. and uh, our organization, we set up SOS Anti-Semitism in the year 2001 uh, in the wake of the uh, Intifada and Middle East blowback. He has just made Aliyah, and he announced it publicly. He's making Aliyah because France, he does not consider it to be the place to be. Mm -hmm. There's going to be continued Aliyah, but that's not really going to affect the figures of the French Jewish community. If you're an optimist, you talk about 650,000. If you're a pessimist, you talk about half a million. 7,000 leaving for Israel, another 10,000 going to other places is not going to be a big dent in the Jewish community. So the Jewish community is going to have to defend itself and depend upon the authorities depend, defending them. Right. Let me ask you something really controversial. Uh, and you, if you don't want, you don't, ask, uh, you don't answer it. Do you feel that uh, th the French anti-Semite are letting the Muslims do the work for them and are kind of standing in the trenches and, and not doing anything about what is happening? Because in other European countries, we see that the authorities are closing out on those people and not letting this continue as much as it does in France. Well, there are countries, yes, that are taking those initiatives, and there are countries, no. Um, this is a boon to the extreme right. Uh, there are even many Jews who consider that uh, the National Front may be uh, a, a good answer because they're anti-Muslim. Um, I don't think that's a Jewish bonanza at all. The extreme right uh, reminds me of a, of a headline on a, a Lebanese newspaper uh, in the first Lebanese war, and that is first the people of Sunday, and then we go after the people of Saturday. Uh, in this case, it would be first the people of Friday, but the people of Saturday are not too far behind. So um, I don't think that uh, when you talk about anti-Semite, I mean, those who have died in the wool of anti-Semites, anti of the extreme right or of the extreme left, are still active. 
some of them are in alliance with uh, Islamists, uh, with jihadists. Some of them revile them. And some of them use a fig leaf. And the fig leaf can be, like many anti-Semites, will wave the banner of the of Holocaust uh, commemoration uh, because that sort of gives them a little bit of, uh, you know, shield of, uh, seal of good housekeeping. Uh, when they are really very, very anti-Israel, and, uh, and when it comes down to it, uh, they prefer to mourn the Jews that were killed 70 years ago rather than face the fact that synagogues are under attack today. By the same token, there are those who raise the banner of Palestine, but really, in the heart of hearts, they would love to cleanse their European cities from the Arab presence. So all of this, you know, this is wheels within wheels. But what we're considering, what for us is the most important is that there should be an interministerial, holistic approach to dealing with anti-Semitism. It can't just be a question of security. Right. It has to be a question of education, a question of the judiciary, and you can't have a judiciary which is acting as it is today in France, where at very best they will give a suspended sentence, mostly it's a revolving door. They go in, they, they see the judge, and they go out. Yes. Um, because these judges from the 1940, 1968 uh, revolution period, when they were young revolutionaries, cannot understand how a, an immigrant who was the victim of racism can now be the perpetrator of anti-Semitism. Mm -hmm. um, also, you know, there's a catch, a catch-22 here. Mm -hmm. If they are sent to jail, the, the prisons are the best incubators of, of Islamist radicalism. Right. So... You know, it's it's a lose lose situation, whichever you, you look, whichever way you look at it. Um, there's a book which has just been published, which is getting a lot of attention, which it would not have done, because it's a, you know, it's quite a difficult uh, a book, and I just started reading it myself by a man called Welbeck, um, and it, it talks about uh, France in 2022, where an election takes place, and uh, in order to beat the National Front. It is a Muslim who takes over as president of France. Women are sent back into the kitchen, otherwise they have to wear the veil. And uh, all of the strictures of Sharia law are, take, are taken over in France. So in, within the context of these terrorist uh, attacks, the public and the media are really looking at this book. And uh, they, are they seeing it as a premonition? Or are they seeing it as a curse? Yeah. Shimon Samuels from the Simon Wiesenthal Center in Paris. Let's hope that this book will only be a work of fiction and will not have anything to do with reality. Thank you very much for joining us this evening. Thank you. And, well. now, and now we turn to a younger voice uh, in the Jewish community. Uh, Sasha Ringwoods is the head, the president actually, of the Jewish Student Association and is very much in the forefront of uh, what happens uh, uh, in the university campuses where the struggle uh, uh, and the fight against uh, the Jews is uh, mostly uh, happening on a day-to-day -day basis. Thank you for joining us from Paris. So, Sasha, tell us, how does it look for the young people, uh, the young generation of Jews in Paris? Well, it's a very sad prospect for us. Very sad to see that we are in such a violent society where people are targeted because they belong to minorities. This has been dreadful, a dreadful day, and uh, overall, the um, climate these past days has been very tense. We all felt a lot of sorrow for what happened to the journalist in Charlie Hebdo. And there was a lot of panic today during the hostage crisis and a lot of uh, pain and anger after the announcement of the poor people shot was released. Tell us a little bit about the area where this went down. This, I understand, is an area where there's a lot of Jewish restaurants and grocery stores. A lot of Jewish people are there, especially on a Friday when they're getting ready for Shabbat, right? Yes, of course. This is one of the few Jewish quarters in Paris. Um, very inhabited place, and uh, well, this is um, again an attack on the citizens who did, didn't deserve it. This is an attack against people, namely and simply for the fact that they're Jews. And um, now there is a feeling for uh, Jews in France that uh, any time that they uh, walk as Jews, uh, they go to a Jewish place, whether it be a school, a shop, a synagogue, of course they uh, can be threatened. And fortunately, this climate has been going on for months now. 
the number of anti-Semitic uh, attacks has doubled this year. And uh, even though we were shocked by the attack today, we were unfortunately expecting it. Mm -hmm. Now, France is the third largest Jewish community in the world. Uh, with such atrocities happening there, is there a future for Jewry in France, do you feel? I'm sorry, can you say that again, please? With France being the third largest Jewish community in the world, yes. with everything that is going down there, do you feel there's a future for Jews in France? Yes, there definitely is. I mean, there's no other way. There is no other way. We are French, we will fight. And, you know, the attacks against the Jews in France are attacks against France, just like the attacks against Charlie Hebdo. And it's not my uh, sense that the attackers were part of the same group. When the terrorists attack Charlie Hebdo, they attack the French values because they attack freedom of expression. When the terrorists attack uh, Jewish shop, they attack the values of France because they attack freedom of religion. So we are fighting for the same values. And this should be a fight that is led by the whole French nation together, Jews and non-Jews alike. It feels, at least from, from looking from the outside in, that the French authorities are not doing enough to stop this. Is it the same feeling of the French people in France? Sorry, the connection is bad. Can you say that again, please? It seems, looking from uh, outside in, that uh, the French authorities are not doing enough to stop this. Do the French in France feel the same way? No, I mean, the French government has a very strong stance against anti-Semitism, that they have problems stopping it. Because the problem is you cannot just have a security response. The answer needs to be much broader and include education, and we're working with us on that. We're trying to work in schools, to work in universities, and this has to be done on a very, very large scale. But the French population uh, was um, out uh, immediately after the attacks of Charlie Hebdo, and we have you know, the support after the attack against the Jewish shop. And uh, I call for every French citizen to be out in the streets on Sunday for the massive march that we're organizing. I know there are a lot of uh, foreign uh, leaders who will come, and I know we have a lot of support from America. I was very moved by the speech of John Kerry, and uh, that's, uh, that's, our, that's our prospect. Uh, that the French nation as a whole stands up against racism and anti-Semitism. And your home front, the, the campuses, uh, have mm -hmm. become a real battleground. Uh, how is it going on in, in recent uh, weeks, months? Is it getting better, or is it still a day-to-day -day struggle? Well, the campuses are the re a reflection of what happens in day life, um, especially on the, uh, the debate and uh, the fact that a lot of people are uh, um, developing more and more anti-Semitic speech. Um, however, there haven't been attacks in the campuses. Uh, the attacks are more targeted against uh, Zionism on the campuses. But um, uh, are the whole French students uh, feel threatened? And also because uh, there is a very uh, important uh, rise of anti-Semitism on the Internet, against which we have tried to fight, um, and notably when we won our uh, lawsuit against Twitter uh, two years ago to um, ensure that uh, people who post anti-Semitic messages on the social networks are liable for what they say. But uh, yeah, for students it's a difficult cl climate and it's difficult for uh, students to be confident in their future here. Yeah. Sasha Reigenfeld from the president of the UEJE, thank you very much for joining us tonight from Paris. My pleasure. Shalom, bye. And now we are turning to a female voice in the Jewish community, to Simone Rodin from the AJC, who is also joining us from Paris. If I remember correct, Simone, when we talked in the summer, you had thoughts yourself if you and your children would have a future in France. Do you feel, uh, what's your feeling about it today after what has happened in Paris? Mm -hmm. Uh, it's a very good question at a very difficult moment. Um, I uh, I think the same question remains with probably more intensity. Um, the situation has uh, obviously gotten worse, but it, to some extent it has only concerns that we already knew. It has only concerns um, what most of the Jewish community uh, knew, 
Um, and now, to a great extent, the rest of the French public knows it as well. Um, so the question remains. Um, the answer has not been found. Um, let's just hope that the fact that uh, the rest of French society asks itself the question now um, where their country will be going and whether their values might be can be can continue to be preserved, and um, that, that it serves as some kind of wake up call. And what are we doing? I mean, the Jewish organizations uh, to uh, to combat this. I mean, France is the third largest Jewish community in the world. This is very scary. It is absolutely. Um, the Jewish community and um, we at AJC have been in constant contact with government officials, with parliamentarians, with uh, policymakers, uh, with intellectuals, with journalists to basically raise awareness and think together about how we can combat this cancer. Um, we, um, we at AJC have uh, done several initiatives um, with um, major um, think tanks, with major um, newspapers. Um, on the left and on the right, uh, we have the end of creating a parliamentary inquiry committee on anti-Semitism. Um, we, uh, um, we, uh, there is a new delegate um, for the fight against anti-Semitism that has just been appointed by the government. And um, so it's not like we are not that the community is not doing something and that the government is not doing something. And um, that we probably need to move faster. Um, because the threat is getting bigger at a, at a faster pace, uh, and probably um, rather drastic me measures have to be taken. I think one of the main issues we have had so far is the fact that while we were able to raise awareness with, um, let's say, the elite, um, the general public was sort of dormant, um, and um, there was no great wake-up call for the general public on, on the fight against anti-Semitism and radical in Islamism. Mm -hmm. And um, our hope uh, is that uh, now that uh, this, uh, this terrible, terrible incident that, uh, that happened in, in our country serves as a lesson to um, unite, against, unite together against, um, against those who are trying to attack um, our very ideals, our values, and the, mass, and the democracy we are living in. Mm -hmm. Now, the question is, I've heard uh, on, on French media a lot of people saying, this is our 9-11. So the question to be asked is, is this the tipping point? Is this where it will stop and from now on they will combat it? Or is this just the beginning of a lot worse that is going to happen? You are absolutely right. Um, unfortunately, um, I don't have a magic uh Role in which I can look and see the future, um, but you're absolutely right. Um, is, is it, uh, from a symbolic point of view, the moment when things are starting to change and, with, uh, and it serves as a wake-up call and there is a before and an after and it's not going to be the same? Um, or are, is this the beginning of something? Or there's also a third option. Um, is, it going to be, is it going to become worse? Um, because there is, um, first of all, the possibility um, that it's going to become worse, worse in terms of anti-Semitism and jihadism, but there's also the possibility that it could be exploited by other parties, by the extreme right, for example, who is looking uh, to, to, to use this fear and um, this mounting, I wouldn't say hatred, but um, antagonism to, to, to what is going on um, in their advances. And um, so the, the cards are open. It's up now to us um, here and to the French people to uh, drive it in the right direction. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that uh, it is uh, your duty uh, as a Jewish world organization to at some point warn the Jewish population, okay, this is now too dangerous for you to be here? Because if we look back in our history, Jews have been traditionally always too late in leaving a situation that uh, turned really bad to them. Yeah, of course. I mean, we ask ourselves the question, there's no doubt about it. Um, the problem is um, that uh, you are absolutely right. When, if, if, if there a right moment, um, there's probably either too early or too late. I don't know if the right moment um, can be chosen or can be recognized. 
Um, and what has to happen in order to, for us to know that it is the right moment? That's also the question. Yes, of course, of course. Um, the, I, I still strongly believe that um, that Jews have a future in France and that they, it's worth fighting the battle. And there's also a second aspect. It is, um, it is impossible um, to have, if, if the decision was to be taken, uh, that all Jews were to be with the, the biggest Jewish community of Europe, um, I find it quite improbable um, that something like this could happen, especially because we are in an environment where it's not... The main aspect is that it's not that the government is ignoring it. The government is fighting it, and the elite is fighting it, and the political class, uh, left and right, is fighting it. And this, I think, makes a major difference. We are not in the surface. Um, we are not in a country where uh, there is state anti-Semitism. We're in a country where it's the contrary, where there is something growing um, definitely within our society that is terribly wrong, and it is growing, and it's a cancer, but um, it is also affecting um, the rest of the country, and it is affecting um, the government and the elite and the state. Who they are the, and they themselves are fighting it. So I think this is the major difference between you know any other countries where where uh, the other times in history um, where you should have less indeed. But at the we end, are still at, protected by the state. But at the end and, of the day, we you know, see one now. Of the things I would like to say in the aftermath of this, what happened today um, is uh, the police um, did an incredible job. And the government did an incredible job, and Francois Hollande went on TV at 8 o'clock this evening to clearly speak out and clearly name, you know, I, I, uh, I received a few phone calls from friends in the U.S. and abroad saying, do you think we mean uh, just because they attacked the culture uh, supermarket that you said this is the anti-Semitism? My response was yes, but it was extremely important that the president of this country spoke out clearly and said that this was an anti-Semitic act, and he did it immediately. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, what we see is that, uh, um, you know, the Muslims can go around with their traditional burqas and whatever traditional clothes, and Jews are afraid to go on the street in traditional Jewish clothes with yarmulke. We heard people that are, going, uh, that are afraid to go to temple, to synagogue on Friday. You know, who knows if now people will dare to go to Jewish grocery stores and restaurants. It's not equal. They're not protecting everyone equally. Well, first of all, what I would like to tell you is that, um, just so you know, that um, there is security um, in, which shouldn't exist, by the way, but there is security in front of all Jewish institutions. It happens that it isn't in front of the kosher supermarket, and the reality is you can't protect everything. But for the past two days, for example, there has been reinforced security in, in, in front of all Jewish sites, in front of synagogues, in front of Jewish schools, in front of uh, Jewish main, main Jewish institutions, there has been reinforced security. The problem is at some point you can't, you can't protect everybody every time, uh, all the time. And look, even Charlie Hebdo, uh, Charlie Hebdo, the newspaper, was protected. Mm -hmm. the, the main uh, journalist in the newspaper, the director of the newspaper, had um, protection for the past two years. The policeman was, was assassinated. But uh, again, there is the will of the state to protect the community. Um, but the question is, obviously, is it, is, I'm, not saying, I'm not denying that it's there's not, there's not a problem, but the problem is, okay, what can be done more? Um, should there be more security? Uh, should there be done more in terms of fighting radical Islamism? Should there be more done in terms of uh, counter-radicalization, in terms of de-radicalization, in terms of education uh, from the youngest age in school, in terms of um, fighting radicalization in prison, in terms of fighting radicalization on the internet and social media, etc. Certainly, much more can be done. But, um, but, we, but I hope, at least that's what I hope, that, that there is sort of an awareness and now a sort of a wake up call that more needs to be done. Simon Rudan, again, sorry that we always talk on such circumstances here, but thank you very much for joining us from Paris. This was Simone Rodin from the AJC in Paris. Good night. Thank you very much.
And that wraps uh, yet another edition of In the News. Thank you to my guest, Simon Samuels from the Simon Wiesenthal Center, Sasha Regenwalds from the Jewish Student Association, and Simone Rodin from the AJC in Paris, who we just talked to. And thank you very much to my amazing team uh, in the control room, Serge Goldberg and Mark Baker, and of course, our one and only Mark Golub who will be here at this table very soon. I'm Ron Jacobson. Have a good night.